Here we go. Let's go, Spitting Chicklets fans. This is it. It's time has arrived. It is Chicklets, etc. This is episode one for all you big deal brew guzzling, pink Whitney nip crushing psychos out there that follow along with this show all the way on all the platforms. Absolutely unbelievable. It's uh, presented by Chevy EVs. We've got a great presenting sponsor and we're coming to you big time in our first episode uh we have lots of talk of what this show is going to be about and we'll get to that but first i'm going to bring in a buddy of mine matt murley started our first uh pro career our careers in pro together right out of the gates in wilkesbury scranton penguins the wilkesbury scranton penguins and uh matt murley went on to play all over the damn world and has become the ebr legendary uh gambling king uh says wit on spit and chicklets of barstool and uh merle welcome and by the way merles you live in sweden i know a lot of people are interested about that we glaze over it a lot i'm hoping we can dig into this but welcome to this podcast how is life i haven't seen you since pittsburgh uh and what the hell are we doing having our own podcast be, hey, hold on. Before you get to me, what the <laughs> hell happened to your background? We had a Zoom call yesterday and you had a bare wall. What is this? Yeah, buddy. This is what uh, playing in the show can do for you. This is a $50,000 mural that I got scaped onto my wall the other day by uh, none other than, no, I'm just joking, it wasn't 50 grand. Uh, I haven't got the bill yet actually for it, but Cody Sable, uh, <laughs> unbelievable painter, artist here in Pittsburgh. He does lots of stuff with the Steelers. He paints different things for the Penguins, whether it's a 1,000 game painting mural uh, of a player. He paints cleats even for for Steelers on on certain game days. He's up all night in his lab going crazy. So I had him come over and we came up with this. What do you think of this? I want to hear what people have to think as well. I love all your NHL logos in there. I see you got the American Eagle there now that you're an American. I love that. Sasaki flag. I'm wearing the Winter Classic jersey of the original Winter Classic as well that I scored uh, the very first goal in. We have that on there. I've got a cowboy hat on the Sasky flag. What's up, Sasky, Western Canada? Love you guys. Um, and the bridge of in Pittsburgh right there, Murph. Of course, right you can see you that. Yeah, I didn't even. Well, I I had so much pink Whitney when we were down in Pittsburgh. I didn't really notice <laughs> those big yellow bridges. But as yeah, you can see, as you said, I, I played all over the world. So my backdrop is all free merch and beer and booze from the Spit and Chicklets boys. Well, this this podcast is called Chicklets, etc. Now I heard on the podcast, maybe we'll ask, uh, we could get some more clarity on this later, but um, they're, they're throwing around different name drops and biz says maybe it'll be an unnamed thing. Like one of my kids was born. She didn't have a name for two days because we couldn't decide. And then we finally named her. Maybe that's what we'll be. Uh, I believe I R.A. Know. was the one that uh, R.A. wasn't too pleased with the Chicklets, et cetera, name. He he said he could come up with a few other ones. He mentioned check the game notes. I'm sure we'll get mm-hmm. to that when Biz and Wick come on, but R.A. was not too pleased with it. So I want to introduce also a regular face who just chimed in, Mikey Grinelli. Maybe he can give us some info on the name of the show, but also he'll be our producer on this as well. So a regular face from the from Chicklets and and. Gee, how does this whole how does this machine operate? How are we operating underneath Spit and Chicklets? You were kind of the wizard of Oz behind the curtain, but we see your face. Yeah, so Chick- Chicklets Etc. is going to be a sub brand of Spit and Chicklets, where you'll be able to find this show on all Spit and Chicklets platforms. You know, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, as well as YouTube. We'll be on YouTube as well, so we'll be on the Spit and Chicklets YouTube channel. There'll be a Chicklets Etc. playlist where you can find all Chicklets Etc. content. Because while we will just do this show, it will be Chicklets Etc. show. I'm sure there's going to be more content coming from you guys because, as we know, we see it all the time with Merle's videos you guys are content machines and i want to say this a lot of questions merles i want to get to you for this a lot of questions what this show will be and the greatest thing about it is is like we kind of don't know but we kind of do know and it's and how are we going to kind of differentiate this show did i sound like biz there did i say something differentiate (laughs) did i make up a goddamn word i might have made up a new biz word uh, but what's this show going to be that's kind of different? And how are we going to run this thing? You and I together with G uh, piping in like he like he does with some great updates, facts, points uh, and topics. Well, it's just funny. It's because down in New York last spring, you know, we were texting each other. We happened to both be in New York and you you ran down quickly to meet up for a quick 
quick drink and we had a rush over to the gambling house. And I don't know what you were thinking, but we kidnapped you. Basically. I don't even know if you had a choice, but you got over to the gambling house. We put on a, on a, like a, a great show. And I think Biz's wheels started turning in his head. Like we need to get army on this team. What can we do? We got to have this guy around. Cause you're just hilarious during that, that game, those live streams. And, and now here we are a few months later. Yeah. And, and that was a heck of an experience. I was like, I haven't seen you in forever, of course, because you live in Sweden. So I had to make it happen. We meet up with G. I'm riding on a ferry to a damn gambling cave in New Jersey. I, I called my wife. I'm like, hey, uh, she's like, hey, what are you doing? I was like planning on going for dinner. I'm in New York. I haven't traveled in a while just due to my other work, which I you know work up in Canada for Roger Sportsnet. I work here in Pittsburgh uh, covering the Penguins a bit. And uh, I was doing a Penguins I was doing color for the game on radio because our color and play-by-play guys got COVID. So I had to fill in the next night in the playoffs. And here I am, I go for one beer and you know, like a good old guy, (laughs) go for one, stay till two. (laughs) Am I right? (laughs) And uh, that's what happened when I was hanging out with you guys. I never rode a ferry before in New York. I never been to a gambling cave. My wife's mind was blown. Like what the hell is going on here? Um, And that's kind of how it kicked off. I got to know G I think I'd only talk to you, G, on the phone for the most part while you guys were doing all this. But, Murray, you were getting in the mix, gambling, getting in with the boys. Yeah, we we, we needed this. And, you know, when I used to go on the Chicklets ones, I, I only had to do a little preparation. You know, I, I would have four or five little nuggets of information because I know Biz always likes those. And I always made sure to have one gambling win. But now we got our own podcast. I mean, I've been stressing all week going over the notes, Zoom calls with you instead of taking care of my daughter. You know, my wife, I got to give her a shout out. She's really stepped up. And uh, this is really cool. Me and you on our own show way back in Wilkes-Barre when we were dressed up as as old ladies or whatever we were for our rookie party. I was a cheerleader. You were were Anna Kornikova and I was (laughs) like a, it's kind of funny. I'm an American citizen now because I was wearing a USA cheerleading outfit on that thing. It was like, I was destined to do this. What the show will be about. We haven't really got to that. We're going to separate it kind of a little bit more segmented uh, conversation. Um, you know, some kind of different angles on some of the hockey talk. So we can maybe get away from that a little bit and kind of get into some more worldly. I wouldn't say worldly. It's that's stupid. Uh, I would say more segment topics about some things around hockey and life and some talking points and some other things that we have along with uh, different segments for all you EBR uh, lunatics out there that can't wait to just like get your picks in and, and Merle's will try to give you some advice on that. Merles, you'll be giving out a play of the month, I believe, at the end of the show, correct? Yes, I have a huge game circled on the calendar. As I love the, that. As the EBR crew knows, I am 2-0 on my game of the month this year. I fucking love that. So we got a big one again. I fucking love it. This is what we're doing for the people. Chicklets Nation, when you come on, we give you more content. Biz, Biz says you guys want more content. We're giving you more content. We're doing more. Guess what? We're giving you everything. Wit has his buddies. He said, what does he want to do? He wants a job with his buddies. He just wants to sit around and talk about hockey. We're doing that for you. We're giving you an extra show. Chicklets Nation. Chicklets cares about you. Our community is the best, and we're making it bigger and better than ever. Merles, let's go. Should we get, get her going, boys? So let's going. get her let's going. Get her going. Right, right straight out of the gates for you. Uh, our first segment is Chicklets Game Notes, which is awesome. Funny enough, RA thought that was the uh, name of the show. So we'll see if that even just lasts as it is. We're very unsure about this. Chicklets, et cetera, for now, fans. Chicklets, et cetera, for now. Uh, but before, stop, stop the presses. Stop the presses. Stop the presses. We are bringing on now. I'd like to bring on and talk about the month in review, some of the things we caught on the show, on the big show, our brother show, our brother station, Spitting Chicklets. Let's get into it. Let's bring on Biz and Wit, the two lunatics, the greatest guys, the guys that have taken over hockey on Spitting Chicklets will come on right now, boys. All right. Before we get to Biz and Wit, we've got to talk about our presenting sponsor, Chevy, and their Chevy EVs. From Bolt to Blazer, Equinox to Silverado, Chevy EVs are for everyone, everywhere. They're affordable. You don't have to be rich to have an EV. Get out of town. All-star capability on a rookie's budget with enough space for the whole family. I got four damn kids. It's comfortable. The Chevy EVs are affordable, fun, and go the distance. Over 2,000 certified EV dealerships along with a growing network of public charging stations to help you live electric. Finally, charging won't put you in the penalty box. 
Chevy EVs for everyone, everywhere. Uh, welcome, Biz Wit. We got the boys, Merle's episode one, Chicklets, etc. Uh, Chicklets Nation wants this. The boys wanted this. Let's welcome you guys. I know you guys are busy. You're all over the damn place. And we want to get to know like what the hell is going on in your worlds. Uh, busy as hell and me and Merle's have this segment we're calling it chicklets game notes and maybe we'll we'll kind of start there because I know it came up on the pod last podcast RA kind of brought it up about our name and he kind of threw that on there and biz you seem kind of open to it or just letting us like live unnamed for a while what the fuck was that we don't have a name no no I RA brought up the point that originally it wasn't called spit and chicklets and I think that if a really a really good name comes about and it pops more so i think that you maybe should or we should shift or you should shift or i don't know why am i being put on the hot speed what did you what did you think about it wit i just remembered back to being called the wit and ra show whatever the fuck it was and i know <laughs> that we, i'd be living in a gutter if we kept that the name so spitting chicklets was a was a phenomenal switch. I like check the game notes. That's pretty friggin' good. It's like yeah. it goes back to army your story and stuff. But I'm also cool with right now just letting it sit. If that ends up being it, if Chickles et cetera bees it, we just we just wait it out. And well, also, this is when you get the listeners' feedback that actually a lot of times ends up being pretty legit. And we have some more on listeners as you guys will too. But sometimes they 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 break through. And Merle's, we yeah. I think we called this segment. Uh, chicklets game notes just for the fact yeah, exactly of that. On, on our outline it's called chicklets game notes we just want to lay into some of your guys horrible takes you know, <laughs> oh, like that our, should be our hard. A, ra is just too easy picking right now with his gambling picks and then his oh, halloween one about the razor blades i just read a story it happened in oregon it happens uh, everywhere. He was nuts about that. I don't know what he's talking about. No, no, no. About. RA canceled razor blades. They're done. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I did actually, I'm sh- I'm shaving with Skittles now, so it's fair enough. <laughs> uh, but hey, before we get going and before you probably tee off on some of my hot takes, congratulations, boys. We're happy to have you on board. Uh, Army, you've been fucking doing your thing on the national stage and, and now bringing it over to Chicklets. And Merle's as far as you go, man, like, I mean, I don't know. You didn't really start out with much of a foundation, but you've grinded your fucking dick off to bring a lot of joy to the the Chicklets fan base. Uh, I think you've paid off a lot of their mortgages. So Mm -hmm. uh, continue to thrive, buddy. And and thank you guys so much for having me as your first guest. So I'm and wit as your first guest, even though you had no choice. So being under this platform is huge, right? And and being being directly under Spit and Chicklets, you can find us directly under all the platforms where you find Spit and Chicklets. We will be there, which is absolutely huge for us. Uh, I've been doing this a while. You three, let me know. Like, was it the Philly trip where Merle's was kind of brought into that Philly trip and went absolutely crazy gambling, and then all of a sudden, yeah, that was your first trip. Yep. And he hit, I remember the, seeing and he hit the draw yeah. and he's like, oh, I got, I got to hit my pick tonight. I got to hit my pick. And, and he took those plus three fifty odds that it'd go to overtime. And it did. It was capitals flyers, I think. Right. And we were going bonkers in the suites and, and that, that has been a, a tendency of ours. Now, every trip we somehow end up in a suite, we win all our bets, we go bonkers. And uh, yeah, I, I owe everything to that first trip. Holy, like, how do you guys I, I, end up in a suite? Biz, how do you guys do that? Biz was blew a guy in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unreal tickets. I sucked gritty off. <laughs> um, no, I, I think it was all lined up through our, our presenting sponsor, uh, Gallo, New Amsterdam, and of course, uh, through Pink Whitney. So I, I was just going to go back to Merle's. I've never seen Merle's have a glow on like this. He, he seems like a different person now that he's in charge. And, and, and Yeah, he's in charge. Exactly. Biz. You know what I'm saying? Like leading the bus. So I'm excited to get into this and, and uh, bring up some of these topics that you yeah. guys have uh, thought of and, and, and make things a little bit different over here. But so, Biz, it's it's uh, it's 520 in, uh, in Sweden, so he's probably had like seven beers by now oh, so it's okay. that's the glow that's, that's the glow, glow. Couple oh, yeah. no the, the glow is he, this uh is this hero lamp i bought for the show oh you're one a true these, podcaster uh, now these, oh, yeah, true podcaster i got the microphone now you know and and uh one other or two other things g or you guys will this be on youtube will it be on our youtube channel yes mm-hmm. it will okay cool and second so that 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 makes this more valid army wow with that background it I looks know. like you had it is that a professional paint job? Like, yeah, I, is... I want to do that now. That looks I know. sick. 
So I got the guy for you guys. His name's Cody Sable. He's a local Pittsburgh artist. He does, if you've seen any murals um, on the horizon, whatever it is in Pittsburgh or in the past of a, a mural of like Crosby getting his 500th goal or any kind of thing or Steelers players with their cleats painted or any kind of other paintings that he does. He does like awesome mural. He does finger painting like quick, like he can do stuff. And uh, as I'm saying this, my background, I'm riding an eagle because I'm American now, right? Have I mentioned that yet? What's your flag? That? What's your flag? I'm wearing a Winter Classic jersey and a cowboy hat. And oh, I got a you scored that game. Yeah, and I got a Saskatchewan flag ripping for all my beauties back in Saski in Western Canada. Love the people out there, the best people in the world, the best junior league in the world. And that's why I'm representing that Saski flag with all my teams here, Pittsburgh Bridge, this Eagles just riding me off to greatness on this and podcast. your social media tag. That's big social time. media tag right there. We don't even have to pay for signage. It's on there. It's up there. This is pro. I didn't screw around. I haven't gotten the bill for the mural yet. And I say this, what, um, what would oh, that, man, cost that could be, uh, I, I was going to say that could be more than you think, dude, dude, the guy did this all in one he day. He owns too. your house now. Yeah. He's, he's sleeping in my him? spare room. <laughs> <laughs> Squatter law. <laughs> Army's doing like chicken. Ex- he's doing the whole show for free for the whole hey, year now to pay for it. Plowing your old lady. What the <laughs> fuck? It's my house. What now, are you bitch. painting? Yeah, yeah. It's actually right. Painting, her painting her her back. right here in this uh, contract. Here, I signed it with my finger. With the finger paint. Uh, no, but as I say that Merle's, uh, for example, and he's new to this, right? So I know Merle's and talking to him leading up to this boys, and you guys know him, right? Like. He, he's kind of nervous. He's kind of nervous, but he, he had a chick look behind him now. Like he set up this whole thing. It's awesome. And you know him, he's a content machine. He's branded to the max. He had a flag up there that I noticed already fell down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you play in the minors as long as I did. But uh, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're in a brand new spot and the wife still hasn't decided where I'm allowed or to put nails or screws into the wall. So You know, I'm stuck here with all my free stuff I took back from the last Pittsburgh trip. So next show, I'll have the flag in its permanent spot, I promise. Get the old old stud finder. Yeah, Yeah, you got to get better tape for that, bud. But I will say this. He's a little nervous. We've got our own show. We've got the two biggest guys that have taken over hockey with spitting chiclets, uh, riding shotgun with us. And uh, I've never hosted a show before, so this is all new to me as well, which I'm really excited about and doing this. And and we're on Chicklets Game Notes with the with the big boys. So I, I want to start us off right away with some of the things that we've seen over the past month on the show with you guys. You can defend yourself however you want, but maybe we could just get into the mind of the beasts here a little bit on on why this is happening because. One big topic that has started this year is Toronto Maple Leafs, right? I think, you know, they got out of it last night. Big W. Uh, Tavares went absolutely nuts. We had some Matthews controversy with, uh, he went like full, he went into a trance noodle body uh, situation. I think Rupp, Mike Rupp, uh, ex-Penguin as well, put a great breakdown on social media about the melee that happened. But Biz, on the show, you ride or die with the Leafs. You ride or die. And 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 no, saying no, that, he rides boys got and dies. Fuck, right boys got their fuck legs back off the, after the West Coast trip. They got rid of the Bieber <laughs> flu, and the boys were buzzing against the Flyers last night. Well, because I want to say this is because you ride and die with them in one breath. They're the greatest. They're going back to back cups, and at the in the same breath. And and tell me this, everything's great. But Trotz has got to be the coach. Trotz has got to be the coach. Like, how? Wh- where is this coming from? Because Witt said the show's a parody show. It, it that is. was his so comment. He's turned it into a Leafs parody. Leafs parody show. Well, I just because when I compare them as a team, I, I look to a team who had high level of skill like the Washington Capitals and couldn't get over the hump because they weren't able to fi- figure out their structure and also to play with that that piss and vinegar. I go, hey, listen, that Rupp video, sure. I thought that was I thought that was a great breakdown. And I I think that the Leafs overall are a little bit soft. And I think that if they are gonna move forward, they gotta add a chip on their shoulder and kind of get a little bit pissed off. There's no 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 doubting any of that. They do have a few guys who are willing to step in the mix. Like that's why they got Geo in there. I would say Geo is one of the most feared veterans in the league. 
And he, he ain't fucking scared of every, every, anyone. Listen, I was like somewhat joking about the fact that they're probably going to fire Sheldon Keefe. I, I think that Kyle Dubas's kid is named Sheldon. Like they are absolute boys. So I think that they're both going down with the ship. Awkward. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but Wit kind of alluded to, to one of the points was I think that uh, what Marner got sat for four minutes in the Anaheim, Anaheim game. They're up three, yeah, one shift. Look, Right. It was a four minute time where he hadn't touched the ice. And obviously there was a, a bit of desperation in the sense that, that Anaheim had tied it up. So then he ends up getting to go back out there, the whole going down the hallway stick incident. But like the, like there's, I would agree. There's not enough tough love. Like you look at like, for instance, like torts, busy, 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 busy. They did an apology to her after they criticized no shit, the elite buddy, skill. I'm like, like, what the, hey, what the fuck is this? Listen, they're my team and I put the blinders on and I focus on the positive. They had a very similar start last year, as I mentioned on the podcast, finished with a, 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 a organizational best 115 points in the regular season. I mean, it's a fucking long history story franchise here. That's pretty, pretty good year after having a rough start, start where everyone thought the, the wall was, or the sky was falling. As far as the head coaching change, like if it happens, it happens. I don't think it would happen anytime soon. Things would have to get a lot worse in my opinion, but overall, it's like, we're talking about 10 games into the season. They did this last year. They're yeah. notoriously slow starters. Like if you want to talk about Mitch Marner, okay. Statistically over the last two years, he's been the best right winger in the game. Uh, yeah. He went poopy pants and went and sl slapped him to stick, but I'm not going to like rag on him. Cause he, he showed some emotion as far as Austin Matthews concern in that video and the breakdown by Rupp. And I can throw it over to you or Witt or Merles, but yeah, it, it didn't look good. And yeah, maybe that would wear on teammates, but I also think that when you're scoring 60 a year and you're relieving a lot of pressure where the wins keep coming in and you got to have a good time, there's other guys who can bring that element. Maybe they yeah. just don't have enough guys. Maybe certain guys in the room would like to see Austin, Austin Matthews fight connect me. But we also had the conversation last year when, um, uh, when McKinnon ended up going after the guy from Minnesota Dumba. And, Dumba. Dumba, and he almost broke his hand before playoffs. Yeah. So you got to be careful what you wish for. And also last year coming into the season was that wrist injury for Austin Matthews. So maybe that's a reason he's had an internal discussion as to like, regardless of what happens, you ain't dropping him and tossing him. Inside the beast of biz nasty. Yeah, uh, that's why that's we how love it you. is. That's how it is now. Like, that's why, like, yeah, Rupper, the game he grew up in, we were all fighting. We were all sticking up for each other. The game has completely changed. There's way too much money involved now. I own the team. I don't want my $12 million player fighting. Yeah, he doesn't maybe have to laugh, but I, he's not fighting. Do, 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 do you want him having it. noodle arm? Do you want him having noodle arm and looking at the ground with like, yeah, that like, like, can like lead to. Who said it after the McKinnon thing? I don't remember who it was. It's like, that's like the game. Like, I, I know it's not the same game, but you can't tell me that doing that stuff isn't going to like get a team to grab onto each other and buy Galvanize. into like, it's like, that's how you win a cup. Yeah. And, yeah. and I don't know. I, I understand both sides of the fact, like if that kid breaks his hand, everyone's like, what the fuck is he doing fighting? But that's the risk you take in this game. So I want to get back. And me and Merles were talking about this in the lead up with this discussion is belief. And Biz, you believe. You believe. You're a believer. And I, I want I to know. I don't think he does. No, I want to know because Wit, down. you don't believe. And 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 what no. don't you believe about? Because this, I think, is a deeper issue. I think it's his playing style. I think this is exactly what we're talking about with Matthews. The, the, the commitment. And like, you know, I tweeted out last night. Uh, uh, Spit and Chicklets tweeted out the shift with Brendan Gallagher the other day. And I tweeted, give me 15 of these guys. And I'm getting ripped on a little bit. Like, Oh my God, you guys would go. Oh, and 82. I'm like, you're missing the point. You're missing the goddamn point. This is about <laughs> fucking heart. This is about, this is about passion. wins and losses. This is about wins and this losses. Have internet clips. Yeah. I got a comment. <laughs> <laughs> this is about clicks, baby. Uh, I got a lot of clicks. I got a lot of reaction from it, but it's like, this is like the attitude and the heart and they the battle one. level. They have one bunting Michael your bunting. boy. Yeah. Bunting your boy. Yeah, he got bunting. What do you mean <laughs> bunting my boy? He had a more successful NHL season last year than, than Gallagher did body of work True. and everything like he's a pest. Gallagher he's didn't play with Matthews and do, we need, do you need more of that? Do you need more guys like that though? Don't you think I, like, I, their I idea would, of hockey is not where it should that, be to win a cup? That's I what would, I'm saying. And I think that's where wit doesn't believe you. Sorry. Go ahead. 
No, no. I, I believe that if they catch fire and they just, you know, and not goaltending is going to have a lot to do with it. And then, and then better defense. I, I'm a little weary of their bottom six and maybe the energy that they bring, but overall, if, if, like the biggest issue is always going to go back to the contracts that were offered to mm -hmm. Marner and Matthews. That's it. That's where he, the, Dubas will either live or die by those contracts. Obviously the Tavares one, I would say that he's probably, even though he, he had a, a monster night, I would say that he's caliber of about eight, eight and a half million dollar player. Now the mm -hmm. fact that he's making 11, that's hurting him. But the leverage, in which they had was when they had Marner and Matthews restricted. If I'm a general manager and there has been nothing done in playoffs during the entry level contract, I'm saying, this is what we're going to offer you for the long deal, or this is what we're going to offer you for the bridge deal. Where did it happen? It happened with Matty Barzell in, with the Islanders. I believe he averaged $7 million over those three years on his bridge deal. You, you're telling you're telling me if Kyle Dubas tells Mitch Marner, hey, this is what we're giving you. We're going to offer you, you know, like a, a three times seven and a half or even a, a long term extension at maybe in the eight and a half, nine million dollar range. If he wants to be poopy pants and he wants to stay at home at a certain point, he's going to have to make a decision. You either sign that contract or you're spending not a whole playing year. hockey. You're not playing mm -hmm. hockey for a full year. Yeah. If, if the fan base wants to get on Kyle Dubas about it and, and yell at him as a GM, you're saying my job is not to worry about these idiots uh, thinking they understand the cap that extra 2 million on each of those players, regardless of how good they are, could have went and got them that Chris Kunitz could have went and got them that other guy that could have bumped guys down the lineup. Mm -hmm. That is, to me, it's all on the fucking GM. It ain't, and especially in a situation when the guys are Boom. restricted. I agree. It I isn't agree. hard to say, sit the fuck at home, let your teammates down. If you're telling me $9 million out of an entry-level deal in which you've proved nothing come playoff time, and guess what? If they do take that bridge deal, what would have happened the last two, three years throughout playoffs? They wouldn't have done shit, and then you would have had even more leverage given the fact that they're still restricted saying, oh, you hadn't proved fuck all in playoffs. You took the bridge in order to bet on yourself, just like yes, but Brat is doing. And they wouldn't have done shit. And then he would have said, this is why I didn't pay you. Now here's another fair deal. Do you want to see if you can get it done on this? And and I, I'm sticking to it. Hey, who's the only fucking guy they did it with? Who's the only guy they did they, it with? They did it with uh, Riley. Did no, they, with they did it with Nylander. And oh, Nylander really? went down. Riley signed. He, saw, I, I, he really I sat out what he sat out 10, Will, 15 he, games, 20 games. I, he was the, the deadline was coming up, or at least it was at least a few, few weeks, if not a month away. And it's then ultimately, point, they, ultimately they came to the decision who's playing up to what he's worth. Yep. William Nylander is yep. those guys are each being pay, overpaid $2 million in Toronto, Marner and Matthews. And that's the difference in having one extra piece. That's the difference in having one more good top four defenseman, in my opinion, if, well, Hey, you could go out and get Chikrin right now. Yep. He makes four, four million, four million and change. He's a good guy that they could put back there. So, so I do believe in this team, and I think it's also the Boston Boston Red Sox effect. They went so long without winning, and every, they're the laughing stock, and everybody yeah. jokes about how much money they have and the resources. At a certain point, they're going to have all the, the fan base and everything. It's going to make them snap, and they're going to mm -hmm. get that chip on their shoulder, and they're going to go on a run, and I believe that it's going to at some point be in the next few years. So he's going to, he believes, but he doesn't believe in Dubis, which I, I, maybe I'm the same way too. Wit, is that where you're not believing? He's not the, he handed out two bad contracts. I'm not saying I don't like him. I'm um, saying that that might I be I don't his say demise. you didn't like him. No, I just oh, look at their team and I just don't see like a true cup contender. It's not even like yeah. anything personal towards anyone. And I actually believe that if Dubis were to be fired at the end of this year or his contract not renewed, whatever it is, He'd be a GM somewhere else, and he'd probably be a really solid GM. I do, I do think he came into the league so analytics based, yeah. And he might now be seeing like you can't just rely on that stuff. Oh shit, these guys are humans. And yeah, and like <laughs> I, I'm, this is totally like me guessing. And then someday when he's at a different spot, and everyone gets better after their first experience, right? It, it, it's it's like it's natural for him to go in with one mindset and then after seven years of doing this or whatever, it'd be like, uh, all right, I guess this isn't exactly how I thought it would roll. If you, go, if you go basically just on advanced numbers, mm -hmm. um, but the team they have, I just don't, I don't see them 
I, 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 they can't beat the Bruins in a seven game series. Are you mm-hmm. kidding me? Mm-hmm. Like, look at the difference in, in, and I also think that if their goaltending turns in, in, in is phenomenal, like then you, we have a different discussion, but the whole thing being like, all right, well, I don't know about their deed. I don't know about their bottom six. And then they have that goaltending where it's like, who the fuck knows what you're getting there. So I know I give Leafs fans shit. I love when I love when the team is good because them being in the news is just so yeah. fun to talk about. But realistically, this team can't win a cup. The, 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 the Leafs haven't little... shown us anything, guys. We can't no. spend the whole podcast. No, 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 no. We're not. These, we got to move on, guys. No, ex- yeah, let, but, yeah. Let's but definitely move I, on. But I can tell you, a coach who would not have stood for that, what Matthews did, is Michelle Terrian and Witt. As we were talking, prepping for this show, the story about when he ripped us in the paper came up. You remember that oh, one? Oh, yeah. that was the best. <laughs> what were what group are you a part of? And Biz, do you remember this too? You might have been in the cheese toast just whizzing around with a WWE belt on. This was in Wilkes, right? Yes. Yeah, remember when he went through we were, every we were guy? Playing too soft. We were playing soft like that. And yep. I was part of the crew that was going to arena bar too late and playing poker till three or four in the morning. I think I was the high draft pick disappointment like me army flurry remember he hated us we were first yeah. rounders it was embarrassing yeah he I went had, through I every had, guy i got uh, the guys quote on army their... do you remember yours army uh no i don't remember mine what, what was it? it a bit and armstrong they must be the best athletes in the world they're out here taking two minute shifts <laughs> that's <laughs> oh not my bad God. that's uh, that's not bad no, that's the time, though. I think it was fresh in his mind. Remember when he was on me? I'll never forget it. I was on the ice during a game. And, uh, like, we know he had those, like, made-up TV timeouts in the minors. Like, every, like, halfway through a period, you get, like, 30 seconds so they could shovel the ice a little bit. And I'm standing there, and he's like, hey, Pat. Hey, Pat. He's yelling at Pat Steele, our, our, our <laughs> athletic therapist. He's like, hey, Pat, is Army Okay. And I'm like standing right there, like I looking at him and he goes, uh, we might have to run some tests on army. I don't know if he's OK. And then that was after the game where I had like a huge blowout meeting with him when he was like on me. I'd like heavy legs. I told him like I got my heavy legs. You guys ever had heavy legs? Oh, I had fuck, my whole career shift. game every shift. Buddy, like, you not every shift, but when you had them, you knew it. Like, you were screwed, right? Does that happen anymore? Because what, what, I don't know. Time, what time on ice were you getting usually with him? About nine, ten? No, at that time oh, in the minors, I was playing a lot. I was playing like probably, you know, 17, 18, 19 minutes a game. I was playing a lot and he was just on me. He was would, on me. Would, would would you extend your shifts? Because I, I was a guy who always took short shifts. I would never extend my shifts and it would suck because sometimes you'd, you'd play behind a guy who used to extend them a little too long. And the next thing you know, you finally get out there and like your line mates are already heading off and you're like, motherfucker. Were you an iron lungs guy and a little? I wasn't. I don't think I was. I think I was a good teammate. I, I honestly do. I think I was just trying to like, honestly, deep down, like my psychology of my relationship was like trying to impress Michelle. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be like a good guy. Like I wasn't t- in it. F- I, like I feel like I wasn't in it for myself at all. Like I was just like, please just have the coach like me, please. Oh my God. I'll please you. You want me to go run around out there? It's like, it's like when I did get called up too. like, I was blowing guys up all over the ice. Like I started just this, it just started playing this like reckless brand of hockey, which kind of elevated me. But like, I remember he, he got on me in a meeting in, in Pittsburgh. He was like, army, what the fuck is this? You have no hits on the stat sheet. That's like Crosby not having a shot on goal. What is this next game? Literally destroyed a guy like <laughs> biggest, like massive, insane hit. And like huge stoppage in play, mop the guy up off the ice. And next day I'm skating around and he comes up to me on the ice. And you know how you're doing like the warm, like the twirl yeah, around. Laps. So, yeah. You're just spinning around before the practice is about to begin. begin. And he comes up to me, he goes, did you see the stat sheet after the game last game? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He goes zero hits again. <laughs> You know, he does his laugh and he laughed because I like destroyed a guy and I got zero hits on the stat sheet. You're again. like, you're proving yeah. my point. Oh yeah. You're yeah. proving my point, buddy. Like what the fuck is this? Like how, how yeah. could I win? I can't win. It, yeah. was, it was a constant. Those battering. stats were bullshit. I wonder if oh. it's still like, remember God, MS guys like RA oh, yeah, up MSG. there fucking just for the free tickets. He's out. Yeah, ripping exactly. His bong. Exactly. Oh. The guy's dropping his fucking cheese from his pretzel on the sheet. So it ends up being <laughs> nobody had any hits because he couldn't fill it out. But MSG, <laughs> used to give out like 
I, I'd go to MSG and have like three hits. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't even touch this a soul awesome. out there. This is awesome. Yeah. I remember I had 10 hits or something one game. I like tied like Darius Kasparitis for like most hits. And like, and we had like Orp and all these guys that would, would generate a ton of hits, you know? And I'd like, I'd go games with like one hit, zero hits, two hits. And then all of a sudden, like I'd get in MSG and I'd have 10 hits. I played the exact same way. <laughs> who's yeah, who's that guy? We should yeah. send that guy something. Yeah, Yans would always bring over the sheets, like especially when I I would play like two minutes and eighteen seconds. He'd be like, "Fucking lug, you were lugging the mail tonight." I, I'd be I'd be crushing a pizza pizza while riding the bike after the game. Yeah, <laughs> ride the bike. Did uh, you have just, to do a special workout playing that time? Like I hated that once they started doing that too. My oh, guys who Toronto, played less than like eight had minutes to do like I a know. thirty minute workout, and guys that played eighteen had to spin for four minutes. <laughs> Was that was the most disgrace. like I'm better than you yeah. in the weight room, like separation of players and guys wouldn't say it, but they just be like, dude, have fun with your workout as I just like you pigeon sort of move my legs on the bike and laugh about my point. Just be tonight. crushing the slide board. Like <laughs> is slide board guys- still is slide board still <laughs> used. Like, is that still a good training thing for Probably kids? Probably not. Probably I, not. I, it's probably they probably realize it's like horrible for your. I'm stride actually suing the company. Did. I'm suing the company. That's why? why my hips are so fucked up. Slide boards, the slide your board. Oh my goodness, just going back and forth. So guys switching like, uh, from from staying in shape. Well, you got something else for me? Well, busy I, I want to I want to ask you this. Like we, you you kind of mentioned Terry and then you know the 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 old school hard nosed coaches are. I don't want to say they're getting weeded out, but they're far and few between now. But Torts comes back in, and we were joking around with Hazy. Had had Terry and ever like benched you? But most of the time, if he did, would he call you in and tell you why? Because in Hazy's case, from my understanding, is like the, he was benched early in the season by Torts. He leading told him. The te- leading the team in, in assists, but he didn't. He didn't say a word to him. Really, just, I thought his just, communication was awesome. That's all we always hear. It's 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 black or white. He tells well, you how it is. No communication is good communication. Maybe yeah. it, it just what, so. What was your experience getting uh, getting sat in the NHL? If you ever did, and any other coaches, maybe too. He did. Well, yeah, I got sat. I got sat a few. I remember I got scratched by Terry in like seven scratches in a row, and this might have been the year I got did ended up getting traded at the time. You were getting but, healthy scratch that year. Yeah, I was getting healthy scratch wow. that year. Is the first times I've ever been healthy scratch, I and I was a mess. And I was roommates oh. with Sid, and I'd be like. I'd be like, Sid, what the fuck, man? Like, say something to me. Like, uh, and he would like, he'd be like, oh no, he wouldn't say anything, you know? Because he, he had a point just... the first game, you're a health bomb, and he was on yeah. a point streak. So <laughs> yeah. he's like, actually, uh, <laughs> but I was like, like I'll, I'll talk to him. So. Yeah, he's like, I know, uh, I was like I'm, I'm on the phone pump. with Don Waddell, like literally finalizing <laughs> your deal right now, bro. <laughs> You want me to talk about talk about this? I will. <laughs> hey, I promise you won't get healthy there, buddy. Good riddance. But I remember giving him shit like Jesus Christ, like fucking pump my tires for months. Like, see something. Like, you're like, give me some advice. And he's like, uh, I don't know. I'm not like a great tire pump guy, you know. Like, I don't know. And I was I just like, like, I was searching for a hug, you know. I was just searching yeah, for that's a hug. The worst, dude. Yeah. It's the worst. Remember yeah. back in the day, Army, we'd both do the same thing. Like, <laughs> hey, how'd you think I played tonight? Like, knowing you didn't play good, and guys were like, yeah, solid, dude. You're like, <laughs> you guys were like that. Army was like that during I'm an, practice. I'm a psycho. Oh, how did I practice today? How did I look? How did I look in the big horseshoe oh, drill? Like, yeah, you're fine, buddy. You're fine. The stress. Oh, oh the so stress. Stressed of playing, out, bro. Fucking sports. People have uh, no idea. Sounds like such right. a hero line. You have no idea a stress like the like mental me. pressure of playing like at a level and then like playing on Sid's line was like insane for me to go from like playing in Wilkesbury and then going up and then trying to hang in there, living your dream and then playing with Sid. I was just like every day. I was like, holy shit, I have to be good in practice today. Like, I'd wake up, I'd be sick to my stomach. Oh, like, buddy, I was going you're, to- you're, my anxiety going to practice every day in the NHL, they, they, they yeah, down the road, I might have some health issues as far as that's concerned. <laughs> oh, I, I think, I I think we're down. I think we're down the road. Yeah. <laughs> you have those health issues now, Biz. <laughs> yeah. but that's no, that's how Crosby health, was. PTSD, and that was at eight. That was at 18 years old army yep. and you felt that pressure because I remember this, the few games I played with him that feeling that not on his line, but just in the, you wanted to bring your best to him. Yeah, and that's obviously why they have the six success, like the best players. They, they make you feel like you have to be the best at all things all the time. It's crazy. Well, we, 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 we fucking ruined the penguins, by the way, boys, They're, they've lost six in a row. No, we oh, made them, my and then God. We I, I just, I just They're got a horrible right to come now. back. He wants to fly me over private for the homestand. <laughs> 
get him back. You're going to be sleeping with him in his in his California king size bed with f- five thousand thread count sheets. Old Murr will be snuggled in there eating pretzels and fucking looking up lines for gambling while he's sleeping. Army, you ever get in a fuck you match with Sid? I know he's pretty intense on the bench, and you were yeah. his line mate. Even in practice, I'm sure if you miss a pass or two, he's like, you know, the, you're he had to talk to me up. all the time. And like, this is 18, 19 year old said, you know, but he had to talk to me all the time about, you know, because my headspace is totally different, right? Like I want to, I'm trying to stay in the NHL. I'm trying to stay on his line. I'm trying not to fuck up. I've had Terry for the last three and a half years. Like I know like what he expects of me. I can't make a mistake. Like I have to be this guy. I have to do this, you know? And uh, that used to be like what he used to say, like, you're not, you're not, uh, you know, you're not like Bobby R. You're, you're Colby Armstrong, be Colby Armstrong. He used to say that to me all the time instead of making plays, you know? And that was kind of like my mindset. So it was like a fine line of being a first line player and executing and not fucking up in my brain. So like, I remember in practice, like I wouldn't, I would like chip it in instead of like making that lateral pass to him entering the blue line. And he'd be like, you got to make that play. You're first line. You're, 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 you're on the first line. You got to do this. You got to make these plays. And I'd be like, buddy. I'd yell at him. I'm like, man, you I'm don't understand. A- you don't <laughs> fucking get it, bro. Well, well, so so when I was on the team the year that they ended up winning the cup, I only played 15 games. And that was the year that Terry ended up getting fired. He beat the skill out of that team. I remember they had a, a, a they would dump it in at the red and they would line up one, three, one. And they had this brutal neutral zone four check where they wouldn't even go in the zone to the point where eventually he ended up getting canned because I think the guys were fed up. That was I, I feel like that was such an old school mental mentality and old school way of thinking where you're just beating the skill out of the guys. I, I was just like I had Terry in for so long and then I had him in Montreal at the end of my NHL career that last year. And like he, it was weird because we he would like poke me and I think he poked all of us. Right. Like he'd be like, hey, we need more. We need more. We need more. And it like it made, made you kind of like go like screw you. But also it made you res- like I responded all the time. I was like perfect for him. Hey, because- you know that he if he were to be asked right now, I guarantee he would say he loved coaching you. I know. I think he loved me a lot. And that's why I came to Montreal. Like and, and you know what? I, I, I liked him like I did. I know like I, I know like I've dude, dogged him so much, but told I like everyone him. who I've ever asked a, that that guy I liked was him a as good a coach. fucking hockey coach. Yeah, great coach. He. he, he I don't know the only the, the adjustments he kind of didn't make. Like I remember the cup final, we didn't switch much and we lost both games in Detroit. And like, it's kind of deep. I remember even Zetterberg mentioned me like you guys were kind of going D to D up the wall or the middle. And we, but 82 games day to day, that guy like could get the most out of players. I love demanding. Him. He was smart. He knew how to shut down teams, best players. I just don't know if he always knew how to get his team going offensively. Yeah. That's I loved of- his practices. I loved, you know, Biz, you talked about the system. Maybe, yes, adjustments with Witt's comment, uh, with what he did. Uh, I love, like, the standard that he set with the team day to day because it wasn't yeah. the same in other places I went. Not and a I country loved club. It. Not like, a country reverse, club. Reverse country club. Like, you walk 100%. in, ready to work. Dude, ready I think work. Toronto needs that. I'm not going back to the Leafs. They need <laughs> trots. They need trots. That's what you guys are all over me. Jesus. No, we're not going back there. No more hey, guys. Um, uh, no, we're actually going to go over uh, Marner's analytics over the no, last No, separate season. side note. Um, this is shrapnel at RA. He's not here to defend himself, but I was dying laughing. I, I, taking ride around for Halloween. I get back. Oh, I want to get into Halloween. Let's I, I, go. I, I, I'm, getting, I'm on Twitter. He gave out like five picks on Halloween. They were 0 and 5. <laughs> well, the, the, he, he was 0 for 5. I and then the, he, <laughs> yeah. Chicklets tweeted yeah, out RA's, hand, RA's hand out rotten candy. <laughs> 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 so and, and, oh, really? and I don't I want to visit you, it again was... because you guys already did it. But um to revisit your guys' you know, this is Chicklet's game notes. The 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 shaking cane pick tweet that he went 0 for 4 on that you guys broke down and wit you asked him a very simple question. And Wait, already in not the here shaking defend- video, he was over yeah, like, over in that one too. I think he was 0 for 4 on that one, if my notes are correct. Which when I want to bring up. Him, too. Why wouldn't you just sit down? The, the best question, like in wit perfect form it was almost like his airport he's like like, story videos he goes uh 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 ra uh yeah um why didn't you just sit down for the video Uh, he wanted everybody respected the hell out of him he's like basically without really saying he's like i I just wanted some 
I just wanted some love because I wanted people. To, I wanted people to know how injured I was. Yeah. I think yeah, what he yeah. was really he missed for. out on Pittsburgh. He's we, we were bad. all in Pittsburgh going nuts. None of us are answering his texts. He, he yeah, needed yeah, some yeah. love. He was yep. losing it, but uh, I was just I was laughing so because it's been you know he's he's I, I'll say this he's gotten so hot in times I've since I've known him I've seen that guy go on runs of like just crazy amount. He'll openly admit the last year has been maybe the worst year of gambling anyone's ever had who gambles. So right now it's a struggle, but the, the Halloween rotten candy <laughs> picks because he's, he's listing them off, but I'm checking loss. I paused the video, started check it loss. <laughs> well, you I know, made we, the mistake because I, I, I was a little cold on the weekend, so I took the night off and I just retweeted his quote tweeted. And I'm like, I feel all right could go four or five and oh here. And he did the opposite. Oh, so fuck. I, I, oh, I went, it was really nice. I'll have to come on this and, and dog yeah. me. But if I'm fuck. wrong on the 0 for 4 on the shaky video tweet, he can get back at me. We've all made some bad predictions. Wit says the Canucks are going to make the playoffs. Maybe they will. Oh, yes. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the Canucks, there you go, Jack. dude. The, the Canucks are. I wasn't the only one thinking they'd no. make the playoffs. Now, granted, right now it looks foolish. There's a lot of the season left. Dude, the, the team's fucking horrendous. Like, nobody saw this happening. Mm-hmm. None of you guys I, could I, say you I, saw this I, happening. I, I didn't think they were going to be that good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Did you think they were going to not win through eight games or whatever it was? No, like, I, I, I could have seen them being in the bottom eight teams in the league. Oh, I had him yeah, in the playoffs I, with dog. Don't buddy, worry. Every, uh, Me too. I didn't I see that, so going man. back to what we touched on earlier, I think a lot of people who are analytics based crunch numbers before the season. And a lot of those people had them in the top three of the, the division. I think they're they, they got a lot of young skill guys in that lineup. And okay, I wasn't even going on on the uh, analytics part. It I might pan at, out with. It dude, I looked at out. I looked at my biggest thing in in like bottom eight in the league's crazy to me because I saw I saw Besser, uh, Pedersen, Horvat, um, Quinn Hughes on the back end. Uh, JT mm-hmm. Miller, the Kuzmenko kid they brought in from Russia. I thought be good. You say Demko. Demko. I, I like I like. I like Mikheyev a lot. So all like that players. And then with Demko, I'm like, all right. And that division isn't exactly like gangbusters. I also didn't think Vegas would be this good, but don't Mike, my Canucks pick right now. Okay. Foolish, stupid. Let's talk. Let's talk January 15th, February 1st time. And let's just yeah, see. And, and and you know what? We breezed over Pittsburgh. They've lost six in a row. Now the, the Sabres tap danced on them. Uh, the on Sabres. Two, that's where you can pump my tires, boys. There you go. And they had a they had a, a what they have on last night Merle's a mom's trip or a family trip yeah, full mom's trip yeah they, it was at yeah. home they had, oh each team was rocking their special unis now from I I asked after the game I said what's wrong with the Penguins apparently their bottom six are junk they bring no energy to the table they provide no offense uh, the the back ends maybe looking a little bit slow somebody said Latang went on probably one of the worst stretches he has he's had as a Penguin like what do you see as being wrong Merle's because they don't fix things quick here they can get off the rails and that's a tough tough division and a tough they're conference. blowing they're Biz. blowing two goal leads the last two games too Biz, i don't know how you snuck a copy of our outline but our next segment is called the show or the mindsies and from what you're saying we need to send that bottom six of the penguins to the mindsies Fuck, yeah, they're send just them not all. getting it done before we go to that next segment i want to get a halloween update on you guys i know i saw some social media posts from wit before he went and got like crazy did the barstool car wash with sunglasses on the entire time we'll see that coming out here soon um halloween though you got the kids what happened i did something kind of crazy it was awesome i know merle's was totally crazy so last year we went out for halloween and i've got you know my three girls my son bombs around with his buddies my girls are younger i truck around with the wife with them we set up a table at the front door massive like like jackpot spread for but you chocolate. don't leave it for them to take it on their own we there's somebody leave there it. oh we leave man it. you mistake. probably <laughs> so last year we got absolutely destroyed the, these kids come in they're punks you know they'd see it they just yep. start grabbing everything so this year sick move i got one of those ring.com things right those ring ring things you can have a camera there i can see it all the time so i'm walking around with my girls drinking a big deal brew not you know that's how you do it oh, a big deal. respect respect and i got my phone and i i made a sign it said please take one i'm watching you with an arrow pointing up to my ring and uh kids are and like this no no kids go up there and they, they get there and they they're hypnotized by the candy they don't see the sign yet then they see the sign and i can hear them they're going oh they're watching they're watching and i see them take one 
And then I see their brains glitching and they're standing there and they're like, oh shit, do I do it or do I not? Do I take two? And then I like, they're dressed up. And I, I was like going on, my wife was losing her shit on me. Cause I'm walking around with the girls and I'm like, Hey, donut guy dressed as a donut. I said, just one. Oh, you're the talking guy, to them. I can talk on the mic. They can hear me. So I'm watching like an FBI undercover agent. And then I'm like striking at them and their brains are like, they're frozen. You know, they're like, Oh, sorry. I had kids taking candy out of their bags and putting it back when I busted them taking more than two. Army, next year you got to dress up as the scarecrow. We would have a couple people back <laughs> home dress up as, you know, have you ever what, seen hang that out whip? in the front? Yeah, you oh, hang out. Oh, right no, there. and you think it's Pretend just a, not there. You just act, you, you act like a dead scarecrow and you got all the candy there. And if the kid takes more than one, you kind of look out of the corner of your eye. If they start getting a little greedy, then you go, ah, and you scare the yeah. fuck out of I them. I said, take one, bud. I, like I was that. thinking in my head, like, I'll find you in the neighborhood too. Cause it's always like the 14 year old kids that shouldn't probably be trick or treating brutal costumes. They come up and they're like, they're all together in a gang. Right. And they're just going to raid my table. So those are the ones that like, Hey, listen, like I'll find you. I know what you're wearing. You're in my neighborhood. Yeah, I, I know I who got, you are. I got nothing better to do, bud. I will Dude, track we were walking your ass down. And um, you mentioned the kids that like the 13, these kids probably, I would guess 13, 12 maybe and all of them just had a basketball jersey on like not like yeah. they mail o- over over their mail-in. shirt over their shirt like total like just so we could go get candy and they're walking at us there was actually like 10 kids but there was four in front with basketball jerseys on and the guys next kind of near me i didn't know the guy <clears throat> and he's like wow you boys really went all out and the kid's like fuck off <laughs> You guys will love oh, it over here. It's not even funny. It's not funny, but I'm just like, these punk-ass bitches. Biz, what did you do? Get another Halloween tat on your arm? Is that what <laughs> is that what a guy like you does on this I don't this know holiday? what I did. I think we recorded on Monday uh, earlier, so yeah. we could go trick-or-treating with his kid. Yeah, yeah we did. We did. I didn't, I didn't do fuck all. I didn't get one trick-or-treater where I live and just got some, some nice rest because I had the Coyotes broadcast on oh, Sunday yeah. and Tuesday, so I had the sandwich. And then I went to the opening game oh. on Friday at uh, at Mullet Arena. So I got I've gotten to see some uh, some pretty good teams. I got to see Winnipeg firsthand. Um, they they look all right. They don't look as bad. And, Sneaky. And, well, just like there was a lot of rumblings coming in that there was issues inside the locker room. Like I, I you know I or just you know maybe maybe a, a a lack of leadership and maybe where the team was headed. But I thought that they looked solid. Then I got to see the Rangers, which the Coyotes played hard, and then Florida, who. I don't know, man. I, I don't I I we were Uh-oh. asked on the we were asked, what we were asked on the TNT panel whether we thought that they were a shoe in for playoffs, and I think that they're a bubble team. Oh I take busy boy. Yeah, chicklets, etc. Got our first busy hot take. I love it. Ooh. All right, we got to go to Mindsies. I We found out that uh, Wit and I probably parent like Michelle Terry and coaches where we just yes. like will not take shit from our kids' behavior. I agree. I'm not taking shit from my kids. I'm no, not doing fuck. it. There's too Hell many kids no. out there that are telling their parents what to do. I'm not trying to be on a soapbox, but I told I'm not my doing kid, it. I'm not doing my, it. told my kids, some kids off his hockey team kid in the neighborhood, I said, you're running around with these guys. Don't act like an asshole. And you know what? Because you know why you live here. Take control of the situation. Be and you're you are who you hang out with as yeah. younger kids. Like well, you, you don't know, realize. Kids, like kids can be idiots, though. You know. No, no, no. I'm not talking like kid stuff. I'm talking like if if you're if kids 14, 15 years old, you see the kids he's hanging out with and what they're doing. It's like your kids who he hangs out with. It is how it works. All right, Merles, take us to the minds. These are the show. The Mindsies are the show. We're going to talk things all, all season long, stuff we see. If we like it, we'll say it belongs in the show. If we don't like it, it's getting sent to the Mindsies. It could be something a coach <laughs> does, a player does, a team does. Or anything. So we, anything. It could be anything. Take us to the first one, Big Merle. Well, the first one's got me real riled this up. This is Merle's one. And, this I, is... And, I, and, I, and I'm sorry it's your team. I wish it wasn't your Coyotes. It's a league issue, sh- though. It's a style thing. Yeah, but I, I just noticed it with them. They're showing up the first game on the red carpet, let alone it's a college rink. They're showing up in Air Jordans with their suits. It just it oh, drives see. me nuts. You can't. You haven't won anything yet. You're the Coyotes. You, you like these guys are barely in the league. 
You can't be wearing these Jordans yet. I, I understand. Do it? I, I, I understand it's for the fans, but I would send every single red carpet to the Mindsies. I think they're so overdone. Biz has been these... on the red carpets for a while now. Oh, there it is. fucking painful. Fuck it's kind of lame. It is lame. It's lame. It's just, it's not, it's not that sweet. They're trying to get this like, everybody's Hollywood trying to get the cool content for the, uh, bring out the personality of the players. They don't, I don't really know, have man. any. It, it's, I, I would say of, of all the major sports right now, it's, it, I don't know if it's just because the hockey culture, but it would be nice to see more guys have personalities. Like let's say Matthew Kachuk, like just see it, like, you know, the way he yeah. let it fly is the way he plays in interviews. He's open and honest. He can, he can laugh. I just would like to see more of that stuff rather than all the fluff bullshit. Like I think Nate carpets. dog, Nate dog's a pretty good interview on with you guys. He's, he's, he's awesome. pretty much himself. No like cliches. that's a superstar beauty, zero cliche claim. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. The next Mindsies or show thing also, Whit, you want to you have anything to say on the red carpet thing or the, the Nike? Uh, my my devil's the... advocate to Murr is like when you're that bad and that pathetic and that franchise is such a losing, dis, dis, like despicable franchise in, in Arizona, like try to get some attention with like cool fashion. Well, well how, this isn't just an Arizona Coyotes thing. No, this is a league thing. Carpet. Thank okay, you. Fair enough. Wit. I should have. And they're not despicable. That was. But we word. saw it on the um, on the mullet arena unveiling, and we saw guys and Merle's was losing his shit. He went like yeah, full guys blown. like now. I know, and even now on like Sports Center, the guys have suits with Air Jordans on. Yeah. I wear Air Jordans. I like them. I've never rocked them with a suit. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't she brought piss up me a off. Good it doesn't point. piss me off as much as the. I, I'm it's, the old grumpy veteran, you know. I'm the old. You know, maybe I, was I, I don't wear fucking sneakers with with suit. The only yeah. sneaker Keep that I would bro. wear with a suit are are Lavins, which they have yeah. the leather toe. They're a little bit of a classier sneaker. I think yeah, they I go got a couple pairs 50. of those. Yeah, yeah they're just a pairs. yeah, not a big deal. Um, but I'm more of a traditionalist, and I think that the sneaker and suit thing is definitely overplayed. I think Ra, if I can speak for him, he it, it, it disgusts him. Yeah, he's it a classic. Gus Sim. When he's he like wears, oh yeah, he flipped about that. I think. Yeah, when he, he wears it. his suits. It's Dior dress shoes. It's Gucci loafers. Yeah, none of this fucking sneaker. Old tumbler. Spice cologne. The, the brute. The brute <laughs> cologne. <laughs> okay, boys. Next one here. This is a, like more of a worldly thing, and I, I'm interested to hear about this. It's storming everyone's conversations. You throw on social media. He's Elon Musk, a big player. We're, we're on social media. We're on Twitter. He bought Twitter. It came out $20 a month subscription for a check mark. No, now eight, it's $8. Eight. It came out 20. Now it's $8 a month. Is that, is that the Mindsies or is that show or what the fuck is going on here? I'll take People it. They're going to pay for uh, their, their, their check marks. So from my understanding, he, he kind of got roped into a contract. Maybe the valuation was, uh, probably a lot bigger than it should have been so he overpaid for it so he's probably he had a bot find... issue well there yeah that was another issue that was there but uh i have no problem with him as the owner of it trying to recover funds for it what i think is that whole check mark thing went out of control and so many fucking losers and dweebs got them on there where it yep. gave them like validity uh, I would just say, I hope that I have the option to say, Hey, I don't want your fucking check mark and I don't want to pay eight bucks a month. Like, you do. My, no, you know, no, no. You should not, get not, your be, check not mark. because I'm cheap, just because I'm like, I don't fucking care to have this and pay you for it. Like, so, I never like, asked for this check mark. Take it back. I don't want to pay your eight bucks for all those people. Does Portnoy complain. have a check mark? No. no, I don't think he wants one either. No, he doesn't. So the, want thing, one. the thing that the thing that I'm reading is, you could still have Twitter completely normal without the check mark. And I guess if we don't pay, we'd lose the check mark, which I don't care about that. But what paying gets you, I believe, like people have said, like, um, you get to post longer videos, which could be valuable to oh. some people. So instead mm -hmm. of the two minute max, it could be like eight minutes or I'm just making up number, but longer videos. So some people have said that's a really good thing. Um, when you have the blue check mark after paying now, I believe your name would pop up more frequently and more often to people searching things. I, mm. I don't know the exact definition or what will happen there. That was another thing. I don't care to pay. Like if Grinelli is going to have Barstool pay to have our us keep ours, fine. I'm not going to pay it. Um, but I totally understand. Like the guy, I think he got in an argument on Twitter with AOC, that 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 oh, politician fuck, moron worst, that, that he was like, worst. He was like, I have to pay. I have to make money. Like, the, 
I don't know. I think I think they're looking to make no, money. That's, that's Twitter's AOC's, never made a dollar. AOC's mentality: everything should be handed out for free. Yeah, exactly. So, so I don't know. I, I'm going to say not to the to the Mindsies because it's up say, to you. He's a journey. It's a journeyman. It's a, he's up it's, and down. A, he's a, up and down. You're coming yeah. up and down. Your hockey DB is looking like a disgraceful, like maybe like Merle's his hockey DB played on a thousand <laughs> leagues and it's all over the place. I, I, we'll I kind say, of a Sean Thornton, 600 games, yeah. minors, 600 yeah. games <laughs> that show like the did minute, it all. The minute you start speaking your mind f- freely on Twitter is when that whole entire mob turns on you. And I feel like Elon Musk obviously lets it fly and doesn't give a flying fuck what these losers with 1,500 followers and check marks think of them. What's the check mark? thing? Biz, so many people have had blue check marks that are absolute pigeons. 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 So it's like the blue check mark doesn't even matter anymore. No, no. It's, it's like who that. you know that can get you a check mark yes. that does it in the yes. system. So the whole idea was like, I have a it's check like mark. TSA pre check. I'm cooler than you. <laughs> it's like every fuck it. There's more people without TSA I know. check now. Yeah. Like the lines are bigger. I have a check mark. I'm better than you. You don't. You're you're a pigeon or peasant. What if they did like real check marks for guys like yourself that are big deals? And you guys keep your blue check mark. And then if you buy a check mark and you're not like a big deal, you get a check mark, but you get like a green check mark. So it's you don't so the guys the full... with the green check marks are just like, yo, dude, it's like karate sick, pigeons check with marks. check marks. A pigeon yeah, you check paid mark. for yours. Per- karate class on your engagement, you get you get bumped up. You get the brown belt. It's so, like when people buy reasons. tables at like the best clubs in Vegas, but like they end up sticking them in the janitor's closet like four hours from the yeah. stage, but they yeah. bought the table and they're at the coolest club. Yeah. But then the yeah. big dogs show up 10, and they get the good tables. They bump K, them right out of there. 10K minimum, you're drinking floor water in your Fiji bottle. <laughs> Just um, to be there. <laughs> but So I would say that the overall thing can, can, can stay up and, uh, and and people should be able to decide whether they want to purchase it or not. And people who, are, you know, who can get sent to the Mindsies, mm-hmm. the fucking losers with the check marks bitching on there because they, they shouldn't even have one to begin with. Mm-hmm. Take AOCs Boom. away. Boom. Okay, Merle's. This yeah. is my next one. Uh, he, Merle's is like self-proclaimed a magician. He he does <laughs> magic tricks. Apparently, the sleight cards, of hand, card tricks, card, card tricks, trick, sleight of hand tricks. We saw him uh, get smuggle Pink Whitney nips into the uh, Steelers game. He had a hundred of, of them too. And that kangaroo pouch on the starter coat. He told about a sleight of hand move that he does. Where he holds up, you want to explain the story? This. I can tell. You. So it's amazing. I think it started in college when you have no money. You you spent your last few bucks on a beer, and, you, and the beer the bar's closing, or you're going to the next bar. There's no way you're leaving your beer. So what we used to do is we would slide them in our waist, and then you walk out with an empty one. So as you're walking out, you're stumbling out, looking the distraction. Drunk. Distraction. The bouncer's worried about that beer. Boom. He takes the empty one. Meanwhile, you got two on your belt buckle. Boom. You're outside. So. That's basically what we did at the Steelers game with to the, the show game. to the show. <laughs> show what move. Fucking that, that's why the people are going to stop by Merle for these little tidbits. These tidbits. <laughs> that should be a, a, a the big deal brewing tidbit of the day. How yeah. to distract the bouncer on the way out. <laughs> little bit, bait and switch. How to get more big yeah. deal brewings out of the bar. Merle should do content in like a vest with a with a bow tie and and come into his like magic magic lair and he'll give you like a tidbit. Is is Magic Man a, a Mindsy's name or a show name? I know it's Dotsuk's name, but if we do it for Merle's for actual magic, is that that that's I like that. I think if you're man. doing magic and you're just called the Magic Man, it's pretty Mindsy's. Like you got, I got I got a show I got a show name I got a show name that I have been called before. You know what? The greatest magi- the who's the greatest magician of all time? Um, what's his name the, from the fifties, right? Houdini. The old, old. No, 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 Chris Angel. Houdini. Chris Angel. No, old, yeah, old school. I don't, I don't even know if it's a real person. It might be folklore. <laughs> Merlin. Merlin the Merlin magician. Merlin the magician. Yes. I've never even heard of him. What? Never heard of Merlin the magician. Me neither. I'm more like Chris Angel because I'm a mind freak. Like I totally. Guess old guy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to know how many magic tricks Merle's knows, and is he going to be performing uh, performing them live at our live shows moving forward? Well, that that's what I, I I don't know how this has never come on the vlogs or on these trips. I've never broke out a pack of cards. I guess we're always too buckled and too busy playing bubble hockey and everything else. But now it now it came up in our discussion, so it, it will be on the next trip. I will do this, some tricks. How many tricks are we talking here? 
I probably have five or six good card tricks that won't. Not crush bad. You. That's a good little bag. I've man. seen. I've seen them. They're it's it's legit. All right. Before we go any further, we have to talk about game time. The NHL is back, and if you want to see any games this season, you need game time. They're just a breeze. It's a super big help. Game time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. How do you not love that? If you haven't given game time a shot yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. You guys are going to love this app. We've had tons of Barstool fans using it, hitting us up on social about the great deals they're getting. We've been using game time all year, and we actually went to a Steelers game when the boys were in town, right? That was a sick trip, and game time was the balls in that one. They hooked us up huge. Download the game time app to to the account tab to create a login and redeem code chicklets for 20 bucks off your first purchase terms apply to that of course but how do you not how do you not love the chicklets promo code we're chucking around everywhere download game time last minute tickets lowest prices guaranteed all right best league in the world we're calling this beer league heroes segment uh, where we want to get fan interaction. I know you guys have tried this on the on the Big Brother podcast, spitting chicklets, taking over the hockey world. Uh, but beer league is like, no matter how good you are, me and Merles are talking, this is a league you go to and and you end up in. No matter how good you are, shitty you are, we all come together in the beer leagues. There's just amazing stories. So uh, I was talking to a guy the other day. He's from New Jersey. Big spitting chicklets uh, fan bases in New Jersey. I know you're shitty on New Jersey, Biz. But maybe we got to go there and, and see some of these people. Beer league uh, tricks, quirks Etiquette. in the dressing Etiquette, room. Etiquette, rules. Rules. Like, he told we, me. We, we got to organize these leagues for the for the listeners out there. There's way yes, too much Mark. nonsense going on. So chicklets, et cetera. We're going to give them a rule every week to live by in the beer league. And I want to know your guys' take on this, uh, on the team showering. There's dudes that come to these games, and I know they're playing either early in the morning, they got to get to work, so you better shower. They're going to go home, get on their suit, or they're at late at night. But you got to shower after the game. You got to get in the shower with the boys. Like, Busy, you know this, the best part of the game. You played with Keith Yandel. Great story. He always got you to shower, even when you didn't play. Listen, if you're on a beer league, you got to shower. This team and this guy that I know told me that they have a shower sheriff. He's on the team and he hands out tickets to the boys. You get fined if you don't take a shower after the game. <laughs> right up the ideal of Keith Yandel's heart of showering with the fellas. And they he gets everyone in the shower all together if there's room for that. And he makes sure everyone showers. Is that it? Is that something we need to Talk clean watch. up in this game? In the beer uh, I'm, I'm down with that. The shower sheriff? The only thing I'll say is if you get a guy and he's like, fellas, the kids are off to school. Say it's an early skate, right? Say you get the 6 a.m. skate. Some guys do that. And the wife says, hey, honey, come home. We can get after it in the shower. We'll take a shower together. And that's the only acceptable reason to not shower after hockey with the boys because you you may be getting lucky with the wifey. Because that rarely happens, so we understand. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like once a year. So you should <laughs> yeah. you miss one Lunar shower clips. a year. Yeah, that's like the uh, <laughs> that's like the, the, that's like the one excuse your cock from your job <laughs> trap. <laughs> I, I I love showering. I love sh- like post anything like now I'm golf and post post golf guys will take a shower. Now, unfortunately, all the courses, they don't where, have the hockey locker room showers where you're all together. Where, they got a big the shower whacker. Individual sacks <laughs> showers are horrendous. You yeah, well, those are brutal. You got to have the group shower. Am I shower what? whacker? What's that? Well, like, like, like whacking in the shower with the old lady. <laughs> I'll get after. Whacker. I'll get after it with her anywhere she asks me to. <laughs> <laughs> now but that you, you got you, all those kids, you're in the closet on the floor with the you, lock on the door. You yeah, made with it the dog seem barking. like the shower. The shower location is your guys' meetup spot. <laughs> if I'm lucky enough, dude, we got a big old shower with a bench in there. So, I, I, so I'm a little bit OCD in a sense of I like feeling really clean. So. I can understand if the rink's close to home and wanting to go home and have your own shower and then put on clothes because sometimes like you're drying off at the rink. It's just like so so steamy in there. It's like gross in the locker room. The floors are disgusting. So I could see where if guys want to go home and get the shower done, I don't really give a fuck about somebody else's hygiene, to be quite frank. Like if they're if I don't get to stare at their cock in the shower, I'm not gonna stomp my feet. 
more more room for the rest of us. I do appreciate the guy on the team who's the designated shampoo and conditioner guy because you know that most of the team ain't bringing yeah. it. Yeah, you borrow and, the guy's shampoo, and, and, and maybe yeah. maybe the guy, hey, bud, maybe the guy's even got an extra towel. Yeah. Oh, while. yeah. Just don't wipe your butt, right? Like that's yeah. the move. Balls and you like just keep so it away from there. I would say my my do's and don'ts is don't be the guy who doesn't air out his gear and the gear just reeks like absolute dog shit. Yeah. To a certain extent, and if it does, go get it clean. They have these uh, these machines now. The NHL teams towards the end of my career. And even some AHL teams started buying it where it would disinfect it and it would it would smell you nice. You think men's league players are gonna buy these machines? No, you can go you can <laughs> no, you can go to like sports shops that have them now. They like that's how popular they're they're becoming. And or air out your fucking gear and spray it with for for breeze. For breeze. Um yeah. my biggest complaint, and you know, I would go home after the my uh my junior seasons, my AHL coast, and then NHL, and we'd ple- play in these. I guess you could call, call them beer leagues because we would always drink beer afterward, but it'd be a mix between pros, guys who played in college, yeah. and some guys who might have played junior but don't play anymore. But Zenon Kanopka, who played in the National Hockey League, he would be the biggest hardo. He would oh, like, sta- yeah. stab at the goalie. Uh, you know, we'll yeah. do this next it's- month, I think, but I think that's a major issue. That's why I only play like B or C division. I don't want to deal with that shit. <laughs> I don't want to deal with the hardos. A hundred percent. We got. I got in a straight up fist fight with Ken uh, with Zen and Kanopka at our <laughs> at our men's league skate one mm-hmm. time. It was him and that I Lance Galbert, and they would just be running around. So I would say the the don't be the fucking hardo, especially when guys got to co- show up the next day to work. I got best fight of my life in beer league. Best fight ever. Just deesh, 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 just trading. I never traded in my life. I just boom. Felt so like a hero after, and then embarrassing right after. We got to go to our next seg- segment because Wit's got to go pick up his kid. He's dad unbelievable father every year every we're gonna year. get to the bar stool it's sports. an honor to be the first guest of chicklets etc whatever this show ends up being called you guys are gonna crush it and we i'll gonna get you guys back you know tomorrow. i'll be back next month i want to get into the, the to the minds of you guys i want to find out what you guys do day to day if you guys are actually really friends or you just do a show together bar stool sports book segment coming up right now merles what do you got for us off the get-go here wit's going to get a shower whack right yeah now. he's not even um, driving the kids Obviously, anybody that's a fan of mine is looking for picks. The EBR crew is out there kind of hard with the time. And when you'll get to listen, everyone doesn't listen at the same time. But we're going to try to give a couple picks. Me and Army every week, we're going to try to agree on one big play. It'll be called the Armor Play. A-R-M, Army, Mur, M-U-R, Armor. I think some guy on online showed me that. Um, so that will be one of our big plays. If we can get a guest on to come up with a play for us, a special play, we're going to be all all for that too. Um, I, I just want to know, do you have like a special thing on, underneath this segment to get to? I have something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, Merles. Okay, you got it. Go yeah. ahead, buddy. Hold on. You might want to hear yeah, this. Yeah, I, I mean, I just, um, you know, it's it's early in the season. As the season progresses, we'll get a lot better trends. There'll be way, way better trends. But just a couple of interesting ones I saw already were um, the over-unders, which, you know, Mr. Ice has kind of made famous. Most of them around six and a half. There's really no good teams going over that number a lot. The Kings are the highest one at seven and five on that. But the unders are what are hitting. And the Leafs are nine and two on unders Vegas, surprisingly eight and three on unders. So those are just a couple of things to look out for. Biz, what do you got on that? Well, you had something to say. So I know Merle's has a different sure. announcement to give us too. Okay. I, I'm not sure exactly what the line is yet and what type of odds we can get, but I was looking at those games on schedule and I'd like a, a Paul's puck line parlay Ooh. where I think that the Leafs are going to beat the Bruins at home more than a goal so puck line of course two i love goals. that and then calgary's at home as well and they have been shit in the bed lately so you know that they're going to be coming out with a big a big game i believe they're playing the predators and grinelli can shake his head if i'm correct here no they are playing the predators and i think that they're also going to win by two goals so it's the paul's puck line parlay and that all happens saturday night right g Yep, Saturday night play. Saturday I'll give week. mine. Uh, I would. I, I'm. I'm just going on the over with the, the Ducks Sharks late dark, night game dark, Saturday dark night. Sharks. That's our armor pick of the week. I love that, is. that game. There it is. That's that's late Saturday night. But I got a game of the month, boys. Oh! Game of the month. Yes. 
EBR yeah. is two. We're two and zero oh game of the month this season. Timra Detroit game of the month. It's the same day. It's Saturday morning, one p.m. Your time, Army. Um, it's Ferriestad. Ferriestad in Sweden. They're on the road. They're playing the last place team. Ferriestad. It'll be three way. We'll be around one thirty-five. That's the EBR play of the month. Yeah. Hey, had a boy, Merle's play. Let's, let's go. <laughs> How come we didn't celebrate Paul's puck line parlay right like now? It's a play of the month. Stinks. Month. Play of the month. It's a play of the month. Okay, okay. You th- oh, you don't like the puck line parlay? I love Bees it. Bees are gonna whack them. Bees are gonna okay. whack the Leafs. All right, I'll go fuck myself. No, I'm I not love the. Ga- I'm not the gambling guy. Merle's is the gambling. I, yeah, guy. he's like, EBR I, gambling when, when guy. When Biz pop, when Biz pops his head up for gambling, it's always a winner. He doesn't do it often. He picks his spots when he pops up. I'm always riding on the biz pick. So I'm on the Pauly parlay. I love it. I'm loving it. So we bring you guys on for your, because you guys are all business taking over the business. And it's not because of your wit. (laughs) (laughs) Holy (laughs) shit. I'm like fucking Ron McLean or Gene Principe putting a one. The only slapper. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> what a <laughs> I forgot to say no pun intended. <laughs> oh. So anyways, busy wit already left. Busy, thank you for coming on the first episode. Yep. Thank you, busy. Chicklets, etc. We're gonna stay on some more EBR gambling talk. Um, and I hope we can as this show progresses, we won't be on again for another month. Um, good luck this month with TNT. Good luck this month with great interviews uh and action. Uh, on your on spitting chicklets, uh, awesome guests the last month, by the way. And uh, me and Merles are thankful for this opportunity to do this as well. I fucking love you guys. This is going to make awesome. you proud, buddy. I can't wait to listen to the hate online. <laughs> about, about we're, encouraging, we're encouraging all the chirps, all the pump ups. Yeah, we're encouraging bring all it. of it. We want to hear all of it. We're, we're rookies in the league here. Let all, us hear all it. platforms. Bring it, even the bots. <laughs> Elon, yeah. tell the bots to fucking chirp us too. We don't care. Yeah, we're all losing our check marks. Busy. I wore this jacket in honor of you. I was looking for that like bluey, like fleecy poof jacket that you have that I that I really love. Um, and I was trying to pull something off with this thing. Um, very Canadian kind of, I guess. But uh, I got to ask same you time, one question. Since you've gotten your, um, since you've gotten your uh, your U.S. citizenship, have you had any hard old Canadians being like, "Why did you do this, man?" Yeah, I've had a couple. I had a couple on social media. <laughs> yeah, like like I was like just such like a bad guy move. Don't to you do. dare come back to SAS, bro! Don't I you got, show your face here. I've gotten a lot of love though. I've gotten a lot of love. I've gotten some booze gifts sent to me, uh, congratulating me. I got a guy sent me a freedom funnel. I had no clue what this was. Mm-hmm. It's an American Eagle plastic thing that you pour booze in the back, and G mentioned in this you used to do it out of flamingos in college g but you drink freedom you pour the booze in the back and the freedom comes out the tail of the bottom of the eagle and it's just it's emblazoned in like america americana flags and everything all over it so Proud thank you for that in america. well at least i know i'm free so b- busy thank you so much amazing amazing opportunity for us and also to be right under you guys. You don't have to go looking anywhere else for us. So this is a, this is amazing opportunity for me and uh, the Merman uh, to get going. And thanks for your time. Good luck this month. And remember, folks, nothing says freedom like sucking back Big Deal Brewing out of an Eagle's cornhole. Look, <laughs> <laughs> look, look. All right, Biz and Wit, two of the biggest stars taking over hockey with Spit and Chicklets. G, you know this. Geez, I mean, it's been an incredible ride, incredible run in a short amount of time, I feel. Our next segment coming up with me and Murr, got you some gambling picks last time, uh, is called Riding the Bus, Murr. And this is a segment that we want to do where we look around at other leagues, non-NHL stories around the league. And where do you want to start? Yeah, exactly. The ones grinding it out on the highways, chasing their dreams. I have Riding an interesting story. Interesting story from our favorite team in Sweden, Timra. Their last two games, they've pulled the goalie in overtime to create the four on three. It's worked out both times for them. They've won both games. We've seen it in Russia. Now we've seen it in Sweden. It's creeping west. Who's going to be the first NHL coach to do it? Oh, God. Who's going to be the first to do it? This is like completely outside the box thinking. This is, 
I loved it when I saw Fedorov did that. I think it's a brilliant idea when they're going to start doing this. Um, I think it's going to be someone that's kind of new and and like a fresh start. And it might be your boy, Monty. I think your boy, Monty in Boston. I think they've got the horses to do it too. Can you imagine the guys they could start there and then just be like, when, as soon as we win this draw, get ready, yeah, you're what going the, on. What Timmer has been doing is that if they, where they get the puck and they wait around to the other team's tired and then they pull up. Oh, and then they so pull up. It's a oh, real advantage. Really cool. Even, even more thinking. I could see Toronto doing it. I mean, they're they're uh-huh, hitting go. more Where Leafs talk, again. Oh, more Leafs talk, <laughs> but like desperation at an all time high with the Leafs. Like if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Sheldon it's Keith saving his be, job. Yeah, it's got to be a skill team that's outside the box thinking. And and you're right. I think the Leafs could be a team that would be like that. I, I can't wait for the first team to do it. I think that what are we going to call this? We're going to call this the Chicklets, et cetera, goalie sure. pull when it gets pulled in the NHL. You heard it here first. You heard it here first, fans. You heard how we're going to dominate this. This is our play. We're calling it. Once it comes over the pond in here, it's me and Murr. We called it. We're claiming it. Spitting Chicklets, Chicklets, et cetera, goalie pull overtime play. I love it, Murr. And I want to move on to the next thing on this uh, riding the bus segment, and that's the Red Deer Rebels. The Red Deer Rebels. And Ricky Carlson and his crew are absolutely on fire right now this year. They're ripping it up. They're all over the standings, just dominating everything. Uh, They haven't lost yet this year. They're the only team in the league that hasn't lost. They set a WHL record. And our our team, when I played there, we won the Memorial Cup, and we set a ton of records. We've had some CHL records, records, which have since been blown by the London Knights. Remember those London Knights teams that were just dominant? Um, Yeah. Uh, Corey Perry, you can go on and Shrimpy. on down the list of all these great yeah. players. Yeah, Shrimpy, these yeah. guys had stacked team and, and started taking down our records, but they're 13 and 0. 13 Whoa. and 0 to start the Man. year. Watch out for this wagon. G, are you going to print Rebel Wagon shirts or something? As long as the lovely people of uh, Red Deer and Rick himself doesn't come knocking on my door like the people of Buffalo did, I would be happy to do it. Oh, we've got to get something going out. The Western Hockey League record-setting start, 13 we make a Should we make a Chick Flicks, et cetera, trip out there? Maybe go see a little uh, Red Deer Rebels game? I think we I should come that. out there. I'll call up Brent Sutter. We'll drop the puck at the game and get unbelievable treatment. Likely get they have sweets there. We'll he'll probably throw us in a suite because we're we're big dogs. <laughs> That's like hey, you guys I only, only go to games and suites now. You Army. only go to games yeah. and suites. Gee, I love this. I love this idea. We got to get out west. You got to see the hospital. I know you've been out there before. Have you been out there many times before, G? I know. Merle's no, I mean has. I've I've only been to Alberta once. Flew in on a PJ. No big deal. But yeah, I've only been to Alberta and uh, BC once. Well, well, welcome to Central Alberta, the kings of the Western Hockey League, the Red Deer Rebels, my alma mater team. Love those guys. Love that city. Great hockey town. Uh, Merles, what else you got for us? Yeah, I think you're going got- where to the OHL? OHL. We got Michael Misa leading the OHL in goals. 10 and 13 games. And why is that news, you ask? Mm-hmm. He's 15 years old. He's one of those exceptional status players. He's an 07 birthday it's for the Saginaw Spirit. And he's leading the entire league in goals. I guess this kid's a stud. I coach some 07s. Some big guy, big name players, Zach Morin, Cooper Dennis. But I guess this kid tops them all as he's leading the OHL. So is he the next Connor McDavid? Let's well, keep an a, eye on him. He's exceptional status. Tavares, McDavid, Crosby, um, Sean Day, a guy I really like um, uh, that never really panned out. And how and cool now do Bedard, you think this Bedard. How cool do you think this kid is? I was just going to say, Merles, you probably just made this kid's year. He's probably going to be the coolest kid at high school now that he got mentioned on Chicklets. But you're a 15-year-old playing in the OHL. This kid must be like the coolest kid ever, right? Around the his show, school. the show HL, they call it. G. That's how that's so much they think they're awesome. Well, G. In the show HL, they don't even go to school. So I mean, he's there for like one or two classes, and then they're at the rink the whole time. Have you met? So, have you met Biz? Have you not met these <laughs> OHL guys? Merles, I can say this too. I've seen highlights of him over here. I've I've seen what he looks like and some of his things. I've seen some clips of him on the internet. He handles himself. He does not look like a 15 year old, like the way he carries himself, the way he moves out there, the plays that he can make, uh, the power in his game, the poise that he like, you know, how guys just look different. He already has that at 15 years old. So keep an eye Merles. I mean, I'm sure there's been some buzz and talk about him, but you heard it here first. You heard it here first. And, and that's what we're going to do in this segment. We're going to have guys from Europe that no one heard of that I've been watching. There's, you know, I broke some news before on here. So we're going to be, we're going to be digging into college, major junior. 
We're you had Pedersen. You had Pedersen like yeah. three years before Pedersen. he even yeah. played a game in the NHL. Wit and would be been, like, my guy Murley's telling Timber, me about this Pedersen guy. kid. Timber yeah, guy. She's got a new guy. Ever, if we ever stop talking about the Leafs, I'm going to head up to the game and get boots <laughs> on the ground so EBR can get a, a W tonight. We need G to edit out like half the Leafs talk. Just said like enough. We then we kept bringing them up like Jesus and like Pitt's flying under the radar. Mm-hmm. Not a hot start. Okay, here we go again. But that's riding the bus segment. We we want to keep this this pod like not too long. We're not gonna like just bog you down. It's just some more content for you, uh, hardcore, uh, Chicklets listeners. Uh, but that's it. That's it, boys. Actually, G, you got anything coming up? I want to get in the Chicklets. Uh, Chicklets. Uh, you know uh zone and, and and what's what's coming ahead this month i know there's some live show stuff yeah, so that you guys announced on the pod yeah we're actually heading to north carolina uh next week to film some sandbaggers oh, so that's that's going to be awesome i won't say who the guests are i'll let biz and what i'll save it for them but a big big name former carolina hurricane he might go by mr game seven as his nickname that's all i'll say Ooh, uh, good golfer Great golfer from what I hear. And then um, we we are going to Boston. We will be doing a live show in Boston. We will have more information at a later time. And we are hoping, me and Merles have been talking. We've been back channeling behind your back. We want Chicklets, et cetera, merch. We want some stuff coming out. So keep an eye on that. I know you at Barstool and at Chicklets are great at popping that stuff out. We've got what Black Friday coming up. We got to Yeah, check- we got Black Friday coming up. We're going to dish a ton of merch out. And, and that kind of goes to Merles' point that he said earlier about like, we want to hear from the fans. You guys are rookies. You know, every day, a lot of the merch ideas I get, people send them in. So like if you have any chick, chicklets, et cetera, merch ideas, send them in. If you have any suggestions on things you want the guys to do differently for the show, send them in, comment on the Apple, comment on the YouTube, send us your beer league stories. We want to hear it all. These guys are going to be very, very interactive with you guys, the fans, and we're going to make this the best sub branded show ever. Anything else here, Murr? Uh, just for a little tip, uh, there's a sneaky 2 PM Friday NHL game from Finland. We got Avalanche and the Blue Jackets are over here in Europe playing. So don't miss that game. Avalanche are going to spank them. Columbus stinks. Yeah. Global series has started up, uh, starts up this weekend. Good call on that Merles. So with that being said, thank you everyone. Uh, I know it was very reactionary with their hot takes and we, we, we want to get to more inside the Chicklets universe, inside the minds of wit and biz day to day. Some of that more, topical stuff that people I think want to hear about their lives and different things inside of their lives or their, uh, what they're doing. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you in a month. The first Thursday of every month, we will be dropping a chicklets, et cetera, and extra content all found underneath all the stations and channels under spit and chicklets. And it's make it super easy for you. So thank you, Merles. We're blessed. G thank you for everything, everybody. Stay tuned for more content as we move through the month here as well on Spit and Chicklets. Enjoy the month.